Good Thursday evening, everybody. January the 2nd. Welcome to 2020. Happy New Year, if I didn't tell you before. We're going to cut some firewood. Eh, don't do it at night. We got the husk of iron of 460. So if you are going to run a chainsaw at night, make sure it's a big one. 20 inch bar, 3 8 curve. That way, if it slips, you'll know. If you're the type of guy that also takes a angle grinder to your rakers, you probably also shouldn't run the chainsaw at night. Chances are, if you take an angle grinder to your rakers, you also run a chainsaw at night. Fisker pickeroons, I gotta say. It needs a little bit more weight on the head. You can see that uh, head's pretty thin there, but these things are pretty handy. I actually had to wait for it to dull down just a little bit. I like it better now. It's Before it was like a freaking eagle talon wanted to stick in everything. I work with a guy like that. Look here, we're making wood chips. We ain't making sawdust. Sawdust is for pansies. Okay, so if you're gonna run a chainsaw at night, three most important things to me. Make sure you got a good headlamp. I've done this enough times that, you know, everybody might be wondering why I don't set up big lights and all that. You get too many shadows and you can't see exactly what you're doing. Um, having a good headlamp is more than sufficient to me. You can get all the spotlights around you that you want. You're going to shadow things by the time you move the saw in and stand over the top of it and all that. 
You'll put a shadow there and you won't see what you're cutting. Headlamp's the only way to go. Chaps are probably a must in that situation. Um, I've done it many, many times without chaps. Actually, neither of the times that I've cut myself were at night, but wear chaps and make sure your chainsaw is sharp. A dull chainsaw is more dangerous than a sharp chainsaw, 100%. That's 100% true all day long. So, that's it, I'm done. So you'll notice I left a few uh, trees on the landing there, two or three. Bob always told me to leave a little seed behind. So that's what we did. So as we go along in this story that I'm gonna start with Bob and Wendy here, um, I'll try to introduce some pictures as we go, things like that, but I gotta, you gotta give me a little time to get into the pictures and sort them out and see where I wanna start there. But uh, Wendy was born a mile from here. She actually built and owned the house right next door to me. Uh, that was part of this property. And Bob was born about mm, 20 miles north of here. So uh, both of them were born locally. Wendy grew up a farm girl. Bob grew up working in the woods. Both of them had a very, very good work ethic. Um, Neither one of them were afraid to put their head down and earn it, which is uh, kind of a shame in our, today's society because there aren't too many people that know what that's like anymore. As we go along in this, I'll pop up a few pictures. Some of them I will give descriptions for. Some of them I don't know the descriptions of, the time frame of. Um, and others, I will just intentionally leave the picture there and let your imagination go because Sometimes just having the picture, well, they say a picture is worth a thousand words. So shut my mouth, right? It's going to take a while. We'll do it a little bit at a time. Hope everyone's having a great night. I'm going to do a little work in here yet. Stick around, watch a few more videos. We'll have another one coming for you shortly. See you again next time.